Welcome to the last part of this presentation on Draconic Astrology. In this part of the presentation, I'm going to be referring to Draconic Sinistry and Draconic Transits. So Sinistry means stars in the same place. And when we look at Draconic Sinistry, we have to think of associations brought from past lives, at least at least this was the way that Ronald Davison treated draconic sinistry in his famous book, Sinistry. So we're talking about connections that are going on underneath the surface. That's always the case with draconic. It's what's behind the scenes. And we're talking about soul agreements, very, very significant relationships. Sometimes you look at people who are in a very, very difficult relationship and they can't just, they can't stop. They can't, they can't let go. And many times you could see connections in the draconic level that are not apparent in the tropical level. So have a look at that. It's worth, it's worth doing research and that sort of thing. Let's have a look at the tropical synastry between Harry and Meghan Markle. Okay, so Meghan's Pluto is very near his Venus, it makes sense, and her Mars is directly on his descendant, which also makes a lot of sense. But what confused me when I looked at this synastry was this news. So where is Uranus? Uranus has to be there. It plays a key role in the relationship, okay? Something unexpected leaving the royal family in the way they left, being outsiders, that's Uranus. And I couldn't see Uranus in the tropical synastry. However, when I looked at the draconic synastry, Megan's Uranus is very, very near, less than three degrees away from his son, draconic son, and his draconic Uranus is opposite her draconic sun. So this relationship was always going to be in an internal level about breaking free. And that wasn't apparent when we looked at the tropical synastry. So here you can see very clearly how draconic offers very valuable information, a different perspective that makes a lot of sense. What about transits? Draconic transits have a karmic meaning. They can be related to past lives. If you believe in past lives, you don't need to believe in past lives in order to do draconic astrology, but they're always felt as unavoidable. They bring a sort of closure. Let's have a look at Kobe Bryant's chart. On the day of the accident, if we look at the tropical transits on the tropical chart, we can only see Mars transiting on his Neptune. Of course, we don't have a Rodan rating for this chart, and that is why it didn't use houses. But this, this is the only testimony that we have on the day of his death. I didn't think that was enough. If we look at the draconic transits on the tropical chart, we can see how draconic Saturn and Pluto that were very near a conjunction that day were affecting his tropical Venus, Pluto and Mars. This is really impressive because the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto has to do with something that falls. It has to do with destruction. If we look at the draconic transits on the draconic chart, we can see how the draconic transit of Saturn and Pluto were opposite his draconic Venus, Pluto, and Mars, which again makes an awful lot of sense compared to the transits on the tropical chart. We can also see how draconic Mars was transiting opposite draconic Saturn. Again, Mars is a trigger and Saturn has to do with death or very unpleasant situations. I hope this was helpful. 
Thank you once again, Nadia, for this great opportunity and bless you all.